questions. Okay, so this is the next chunk of code by a different subscriber. So this person didn't do a text-based game. He did try to do a basic adding operator or adding program. Um, so first off, uh, did want to touch over a couple things. Uh, I personally like to see variables that are declared and initialized right off the bat. Or well, definitions here. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a declaration, and this is a definition or this could be an initialization honestly terminology not so great if anyone knows that better than me because i don't really like it never becomes a day-to-day -day thing where i'm like oh did, did you go to like it's good to be able to talk talk about code but generally something this low level you don't necessarily need to like you to retain um but it is good knowledge to know so if anyone knows the exact wording for declaration and this, I think, is either a definition or an initial, initialization, but I'm not positive. Um, yeah, but I think I'm pretty positive this is a declaration. And then I'm just not, yeah, well, someone will probably let me know. If not, whatever. Um, it's not that important. The concept's more important than the understanding of terminology, in my opinion, at this point. Uh, so, and then output value. So he initialized everything, and the reason why I would say initialize everything when you define the variable is that, um, or declare the variable, um, is that it, like, if you forget to, to define something like here, then you may un end up with variables uh, uh, undefined, uninitialized, and I'm going to go with defined, that way I don't have to keep saying defined, initialized. So if you, you end up with variables undefined. So what does it mean if a variable is undefined? So I'm going to touch on something briefly here. We're going to talk on it more later. But um, if I take something like input value here and I try and percent D it. Now this isn't what he did in his code, but I'm just trying to show a reason why I like to try and define everything and then do backslash N for a new line character. Um, and then paste that into the there so that it'll go into percent %d. So put a breakpoint here. So we're trying to use this variable without actually uh, defining it as anything. So what is it original like without defining it? It's this weird crazy number of I don't know if you guys can see that and I don't think I can you know what let's actually grab this number double click on it pull it out and then paste it so you guys can see it. That is what that's currently defined as in code. I haven't defined it, so it's going to be some crazy number, uh, and I'll explain why it's that crazy number later on, but just know that it's it's this crazy number, and when you actually try and use it because it's undefined, you'll get what's called a runtime error. So this is a, a runtime error. It's trying to use a variable that has not been initialized, and so this causes um, a bunch of problems. Um, and just decides, you know, I can't run anymore and actually crashes. So if we try and run this thing with control F5, we get the same sort of dialogue pop up. It's a little different because we use control F5 instead of F5, but basically the same readout, the input value is being used as un is being used without initialized, being initialized. So abort, um, and the program just ends. So this brings us to a point, there's two different types of problems say if I put a semicolon here by mistake and we try and compile this or run this uh, however you want to well it's compile and then it gets compiled and then runs but if you just compile it even you can see all these errors I, I feel I should touch on that more when you hit F5 generally what it does is it doesn't compile and then runs it for you instantly if you hit something like F7 that's just gonna build it it's not gonna run it but run it but you're gonna see any errors or warnings that are gonna pop up so this is an error. This is a compile time error. When the compiler was running this, it's seen there was a problem and it immediately um, tells you about it and won't let the code compile completely so that it can be actually run as an executable. So, but when, when you actually have something like this here where it crashes in the middle, that's called a runtime error because the, the application is running and during that runtime it crashes and that's a runtime error. So runtime errors are actually harder to find because you don't, when your code gets really massive and complex, then you don't know what exactly that could be sometimes and sometimes those can become very difficult to track down. Um, so again, that's why I like to initialize or define or define things okay so a uh, bit of a tangent there so as for the adding of this thing 
Um, very common mistake here, semicolons at the end of if statements. A lot of people were sending me code with this problem. Um, also had some people sending me code like this with, um, well not like that, but like this, where it was like semicolon at the end of a while loop. What that actually does, control F5, is infinite loop. This isn't asking for dialogue, it's just literally sitting on this one while loop line and repeating it over and over and over again. Because it's basically seeing this as something similar to this. And so basically it's just seeing no, no nothing inside the while loop so it just keeps printing that one line or not printing but keeps um, going over that one while loop line over and over again so no semicolons at the end of if statements or while loops pretty much anything that's logic based like in a while loop or an if statement you don't want anything at the end of it um, and then uh, one second guys right guys I'm back so I just wanted to uh, save the file because I didn't want to lose data so I wanted to just stop and see if it would actually successfully save and it did so moving on um, so this is all defined correctly now uh, so this is trying to do a basic condition uh, there's a couple things wrong with it um, so first off um, I'm not sure why he wants to stop it from defining it from not being zero um, this isn't really a problem, so I'm gonna take this out, and I'm gonna explain a bit of like, um, we're, well, we're gonna sh I'm gonna show how it would work, basically without that stopping the zero, and then we'll go back and take a look at it. Um, so another problem here is this line here. So I actually had to i would never seen this before, so I actually had to take a look and see exactly what it does. Um, Oh, what is it? It shoot! It crashed on something. I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna hit F7 and then oh, the executable is still open from that infinite while loop. Um, so right, so now we run this, and it's gonna ask for some input. So we're gonna get, uh, let's say, put in two and oh, it's stopped here. So we're gonna hit F10 over that, and then two again, and then input values two, input values two, output values zero so what's gonna happen here is it executes code from the right to the left so it's gonna do uh, this operation first so it's gonna make input value equal to output value and then it's gonna do this which is now equal to zero um, and plus equal that to two which is the, or input value so plus equal to pl two plus equals zero would be two because it's basically saying two is equal to two plus zero which is equal to two um, so I, the intended uh, outcome I'm pretty sure is what he wanted was output value is equal to the addition of these two but he used plus equal the problem with this is that if by using plus equal it would actually do input value two is plus equal or or input value is plus equal input value two. So what what does that mean? It means that it's going to take input value and add to it input value two. So input value would become four, and so that would be the end of this operation. And then it would do this and make output value equal to input value. So that would actually give you the appropriate like uh, effect you would see whatever the numbers added up should be but it's changing this variable as well which is probably not what you want to do because you probably don't want to be changing this variable because then you're going to end up with weird stuff if you ever use this variable down later because you might expect this to be whatever was input but you've actually changed it so this is probably what was meant was output value is equal to input value plus input value two and so this should work um, the only thing is, no, no, this should work. So let's actually just run this. So two, enter second value, two, four, um, 54 and four, 58. Crazy value, crazy value, crazy output. Um, only thing is this output should be um, like that. So we don't have to, uh, cause like right now it's, it's typing stuff at the end of the output. Um, if you add in that new line, it'll show up on the next line down. So, uh, one plus one is two, two plus two is four, four plus four is eight, eight, well, five and six is 11. Um, 11 
plus 23, 34, random number plus random number. It's that number. It's a calculator. So I think that's what was intended. Um, and I'm running out of time. Like this is getting really long now. So yeah, I think this is a basic calculator. I'm not sure why um, he was doing this whole like not equal to zero thing. Um, it's it's like he didn't want them to add, add zero to zero. Um, probably because this thing was probably giving an error for that uh, is my best guess. Um, actually, let's see if we can. Oh, I shoot! I got rid of the redo history. Okay, so now uh, control F five uh, zero and zero zero. Yeah, so that works fine. I'm not sure why he was because uh, if you look at his, the way he had done this was he had added all these checks to make sure um, to make sure that you don't put in zero uh, it still would have ran through but it was like adding it like yeah it seems a bit weird to try and stop them from adding zero but I don't think it even would have stopped them it just would have not uh, would have not added the numbers together and then still would have output whatever output value was from the previous one um, so the way you probably like this is just um yeah this could be done but i i don't think it's necessary to show i think the showing uh it as a calculator uh is pretty much what was the, the attempt so uh fixing that up will uh sort of show what i think the per subscriber was trying to build and so in that case you wouldn't need any of these Right guys, and so just final thoughts here is, uh, yeah, so if you guys have broken code and your code's not running for you, it's not compiling, and you can't figure it out, then, you know, feel free to message it to me, and I will, like, let me know whether or not you want me to use it for frequently asked subscriber questions, or whether or not you just, you know, you want to have your name said in the video or if you want to remain anonymous or whatever um, but you know if you let me use your code broken code um, for subscribers frequently asked subscriber questions then I think everyone would learn from that because I feel like uh, everyone sort of has the same kind of mistakes when they first start coding and the problem is I can't really remember what those mistakes are because it's been so long since I first started coding so I think probably these subscriber based uh, frequently asked questions videos probably will be the most helpful um, in a lot of ways so yeah um, that's pretty much it so just you know to feel free to send me your broken code um, it, I may not get back to you right away but I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible um, and yeah I guess that's basically it but yeah if you don't send me your code and if you just send me like the error message or something I won't really be able to help you too much because I kinda need to see what the code is to understand exactly what the error message is saying um, so that's pretty much it though. Uh, let me know if this video helped. If there's still anything from lesson 1 to 5 that you're still having trouble with, uh, send me a message. Oh, shoot. Missed that jump. Anyways, this is Tolhi signing out. Later, guys.